Welcome back to another episode of the Luxury Listing Specials podcast. You're in the right place if you're looking to work smarter, not harder, and you're looking to attract more high-end and luxury clients to your database. Just a reminder, I define luxury as three times the average sale price for for that given market, for your given market. So if I was doing a training in St. Louis re- recently, the average sale price is 180. So 180 times three, the average sale price is around, uh, so luxury would be starting around the 540 mark. Again, 180 times three is 540. And just a notch below luxury, we define high-end homes as two times the average sale price for any given market. So in that St. Louis example, 180 times two would be 360 to 540 would be the high end average. So I do believe that's the fastest way to increase your average sale price is add more high end and luxury homes to your portfolio. So you're in the right place if you're looking to do that. Again, if you have any questions or you have some suggestions, uh, send us an email, michael at marketingluxurygroup.com, michael at marketingluxurygroup. Again, if you're getting some nuggets or a nugget or two from each of our episodes, don't keep us a secret. Please leave us a review on iTunes or Stitcher. And again, if you have invested in our book, Luxury Listing Specialist on Amazon, leave us a review as well. Again, I'm your host, Michael Lafito. I'm the founder of the Luxury Listing Specialist, or Lux for short, certification for agents. Check it out, LuxuryListingSpecialist.com. All right, today's guest, I'm really excited. I was recently at an Inman conference out in Las Vegas, and this gentleman I'm about to introduce you to shared some uh, some data that was alarming, and so much so it got my attention that I said, i got to get him on our podcast. So without further ado, I have Kevin Foreman here, Kevin from Kevin Foreman from Inrix, which is a big data company, and he can describe Inrix a little bit more here in a minute. Kevin, are you there? I am. Thanks for having me on, Mike. Yes, thank thank you again, and um, for for attending and giving me you know your time and your expertise, and you've contributed on different panels and been at, to a lot of these different companies. And you're not a licensed agent, but you you work with a company that's a big data company called Inrix, and and you guys work with MLSs, and and specifically, what do you provide uh, the various MLSs? Super. Yeah, let's let, do two, two things, Mike. First, I'll give you a quick overview just of Inrixes for context and then specifically what we do in real estate because we work with many industries. So Inrix is really the gold standard for providing roadway traffic data around the world. We're known for analyzing and tracking the GPS signals of half a billion drivers in 50 countries. Uh, we get 30 billion GPS data points anonymously every single day. Uh, you know, just as an example, Mike, we don't care that it's you driving down the I-90 to O'Hare Airport at two miles an hour, you're one of 30 billion GPS data points we get per day. And therefore, we license roadway traffic to many industries, to the auto companies themselves, to public uh, governments, state governments, to restaurants, uh, for site selection and insurance companies. And uh, we're usually the company that provides the ETAs. One of the trends as a whole for us as humans is we're starting to measure distance differently. We used to measure distance with miles and kilometers, and almost always now it's minutes. And just test yourself, you know, how far are you from the home? How far are you from work? How far are you from the airport? How far are you from the client meeting? It's minutes, minutes, minutes. And Inrix is the company that provides the ETA based on real-time traffic conditions across uh, the globe for numerous licensees. We're about 500 people headquartered here in Seattle. Now to your direct question, we got pulled into the real estate industry about six years ago when one of the brokerages out in Seattle, Washington, Windermere, uh, said, rather than real-time traffic conditions, do you guys have typical traffic conditions? Because there might be a Seahawks game or a, a mattress on the road or a bank holiday, and our buyers want to know what the typical drive time to work is. In, in fact, NAR says that 73% of new home buyers, 73% consider drive time to work a key decision criteria, hmm. right up there with school districts, number of bedrooms, price, um, and accessibility and drive time to work. So we brought out a typical, not real time, uh, drive time to work, and we've licensed it now to over a million agents in the country through a couple of technology partnerships, uh, CoreLogic, for those of you who use Matrix through your MLS, I think there's 24 MLSs throughout the country that are live, and as part of uh, Matrix, you as an agent can then say, uh, again, show me all the homes between X and Y price within Z minutes typical drive time to my office. 
Uh, and that way you can take the guesswork out of new home buying. And on the brokerage front, we have about 80 brokerages live, typically through technology partners, um, like numerous companies from Real Estate Webmasters, Booge, HomeSpotter. Uh, there's a lot of companies out there who provide web platforms for brokerages and teams, and almost all of them license this data from us. So that's how we got pulled into the industry. And it's been six years, and sometimes it feels like two days because I'm still learning rapidly about a lot of different interesting parts of this crazy industry we call real estate. Uh, that's you know drive times and 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 typical drive times. That's very interesting, and it's you know in today's day and age where you know I. I I do a lot of traveling. I speak on a lot of different stages, and and I don't have GPS uh, as far as the connected to the to the front windshield anymore. It's on my phone, right? And it, I use the Waze app, right? And and that, so that, th- that's a real time app based on right. road hazards and if there's a Seahawks game in the area or whatever. But right. you guys do the, the, the typical because you're grabbing all these data points and averaging them out, you know, uh, and and so that is. Well, to, to, just more, to be clear, so we do both because Waze is a licensee of ours. So we're we're really good at real time. You know, we update traffic around the world every 50 seconds and parking even faster than that. But for this use case, it's an investment use case, uh, like a buying a new home or even a restaurant. A lot of the quick service restaurants use our data and they want to know what typical is and they specifically don't want to know real time. But we absolutely do real time as well. Just a quick clarification on that front, Mike. Okay, okay. Um, good, good point. Um, so you got all this, the, the, you know, your big data, big data, travel points. And uh, today's podcast is not on travel in real time, although, you know, right. that is a, a that 73% statistic you referenced is very relevant. Um, but, but Kevin, today um, I wanted to bring you on, and we talked a little bit offline, because you shared something in, in your professional opinion based on data and based on the real trends data that we're referencing. Uh, you're seeing a trend where overall across the U.S. the average listing commissions have de- have gone down over time. Uh, we don't have the, the data handy from 1998 versus 2008, but you do have the 2018 data. Uh, so sure. the, the average listing commission in, in, in the U.S. was 5.08 according to real trends. Is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. That's right. And, and we are talking, you know, in your per- personal opinion, 10 years ago it was probably, you know, more than 5.8, and 20 point, and 20 years ago it was, probably was even more. So, in your opinion, the, the trends right. based on downward pressure, flat fees, uh, technology sure. um, is, is going down. Correct? Absolutely. Um, both empirical data and anecdotal. You know, empirical. There used to be discount brokers. And now I don't even hear that term anymore. It seems like everybody's doing 1% listing fees. Not everybody, but it seems like my mail on the anecdotal front, my mailbox is just full all the time of people saying I'll list for 1%. And uh, it doesn't even seem abnormal anymore uh, on that front. And part of that is, you know, the the value equation for agents has changed dramatically. And, uh, you know, 20 years ago, I used to go to these buildings on the side of the road called Remax and Windermere and, you know, Century 21 and, look at green pieces of paper called MLS listings, and my realtor would actually help me find a house. You know, I'm going to postulate now that most people don't need the realtors to find them a house. They need them to show them a house and negotiate and go through the process and hold their hand and sometimes be a shoulder to cry on and really be a consultant, but not in the spirit of finding a house. You know, even an example is my wife and I lived in Boston. We came out here to Seattle. We looked at 200 houses online and felt like we really did due diligence. We found the four. We hooked up with our real estate agent, and we showed the four and found the four, and away we went. But we didn't need her to find the 200 houses that we looked at. It was fun. We sat on our, you know, our couch and looked at houses and discarded them because they were the wrong school district or affordability or bedrooms or drive time or whatever the case might be at the time. Or well, you didn't like the look, ago. right? You didn't like the put yeah. pictures, the floor plan, exactly. a lot of different factors. It's just right. I tell people all the time, real estate, we are basically in a Tinder industry. You know, you're on your smartphone, right. you're on your laptop, or maybe not laptop, but on your right. on your tablet, and you're going to swipe left or swipe right, just like they do on right. Tinder uh, when it comes to your, your, your buying process. Do you like it or you don't right. like it? You, you know immediately. Right. 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 Yeah. Well, it's a complete waste of time when people come up and see the curve and then they turn around and leave. And uh, again, I wish I had actual data on this, but I suspect that those, uh, you know, what do you, what do you call the term, Michael, when you drive up and see the curb, curb appeal and then just turn around and leave? 
I, I speculate that happens far fewer than it used to 20 years ago because you've already seen 25 photos. You already know the school district. You know the drivability. You know they have orange carpet in the you've been on You've been on Google Earth Viewer, and, and, and you've kind right. of seen the house in real time, you know. Right, right. So no, a lot of that good, good nonsense point. of wasted time that just wasted so much energy from the realtor have all changed. But, uh, yeah. you know, you might have other so guests. you call that friction, talk. right? So there's less friction in, in the buying process. So, you know, you, the data is 5.08% is, is the average yep. listing commission. Of course, commissions vary and there's no set things. You know, we're not, I right. know what the Sherman antitrust law says, but, but, but that's, that's, the, that's the data that's out there. And, and your prediction, which is what really got my attention, is uh, in seven years, you predict that the average listing commissions are going to go from 5.08% down to 3.64% is what you referenced at the conference. Is that correct? That's right. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of people have the forecast that the commissions are going to go down as more eye buying happens and less friction happens. Um, so my personal forecast, this is Kevin's foreman speaking, is that in seven years from now, and I wanted to go on stage and say this because, you know, they force commentators to pick who's going to win the World Series and who's going to pick you know, the win the Super Bowl. And uh, too many of our colleagues in the industry don't sort of put the neck on the line. I think they're going to go down to 3.64% only because um, of eye buying and friction free and the amount of money that's coming into the marketplace that allow people to hold their breath underwater with these new business models. And the, but the point I wanted to really drive home, and you're about to probably get here, Michael, and I'm going to be ahead of you, is that people often forget the other part of the equation. I also forecast that the unit transaction volume, and this is good news for all of your audience listening, is going to go from 5.3 million homes sold per year to 7.7 million homes sold per year, which, which means the overall pool of commissions goes from roughly 75 billion, 75.3 billion to 77.5 billion or 77.5 billion overall. So the commission pool actually gets bigger. And it was very frustrating to me as I listened to people who aren't quite set up to live in a world of 3.64% average commission um, to realize it's better in many cases to have six $20 bills in your wallet than to have two $50 bills in your wallet. And as I talk to realtors and brokerages and managing brokers, there's this tendency, no, no, we need to have two $50 bills in our wallet because that seems like a more rich or a better business model than having six twenty. And uh, so my, you know, my advice to brokerages and others are keep your overhead low, keep your overhead down. Um, I, I want to use a couple of examples, if I can, just to highlight this point of changes in technology, if I can, Mike, for your audience. So Geico, Geico is a great company, you know, in my opinion, they save you 15% in 15 minutes or more, right? Do you, you know the company? Yes. Oh, yeah. Do, do, do you know why they, they actually do save you 15%? And do you know why and how they do this? You probably have less coverage, and 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 they'll they'll snip around the corners on as far as what you're actually covered. Uh, apples, almost no apples. Close. What they did is they said we're going to bet on this thing called the internet. It's going to be big, and they took out a hundred million dollars of cost structure by not having sales reps out next to your dry cleaner and your Starbucks in the strip malls. State Farm is out there, all state, nationwide. They all have this very expensive sales force. And Geico said this is a 15 minute decision. It's not financial planning. It's, and we're going to just let people call 1-800-GEICO or go to the web. And they've gone from number 11 in terms of the number of car carrier size to number two, and they're right on State Farm's heels to become the largest carrier in the country because they really do. Uh, JetBlue is another example. You know, I live in Seattle, Washington. I can fly to New York on JetBlue for $99. And one of the reasons I can do that is because when you call their customer support people and their agents, they're actually working out of their living rooms. And we're united in Delta have all these overhead costs of these buildings and call centers and insurance and parking and liability. And both Geico and JetBlue leveraged a platform change called the Internet. And my advice to brokerages are keep your overhead costs down. You don't need to have fancy offices to impress your customers. I value my agent because she's about to tell me that flight paths are about to change at the airport, for example, and I'm about to have a flight fly over this this property every Thursday at 4 p.m., and that's added value, not that she's got three-inch carpets in her boardroom in her office, which I'm not going to do yeah. anyway. And, and that way, point. the we, brokerages we, can... 
But yeah, we we talk about that all the time. You know, uh, benefits versus features. Benefits. You know, what? How, how are they right. going to benefit? So when you go on the listing appointment agents, you know, think about the most listened to radio station that your consumer listens to. W I I F M. What's in it for me? All they care about is what are you going to do to save them time and aggravation and get their home sold faster for more money? Or if you're representing a buyer, what are you going to do to get them their dream house that hasn't been picked over by everybody else, so it might be an off-market property at the best price possible? So th- those, are, those are benefits. That's how you benefit them versus features. Features would be your awards, your plaques, you know, all these other things. So benefits, benefits, not features. And so, you know, what I thought was really intriguing and, and some great data and, and, and great insight from you today, Kevin, as far as overhead and, and, the, and the friction-free and iBuyers and all these trends that, are, that are, 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 are disruptors in our industry that might be driving the overall commissions down, in your opinion, uh, down significantly over the next seven years. But, but for the listenership, I just want to re- reiterate to you Again, if you had, in most marketplaces, the four primary price points of homes that are in any market are entry level, average priced homes, high end homes, and luxury homes. And literally, literally, if just by adding more high end and luxury homes to your sold portfolio, you can increase your average sale price, you can net a lot more income or commissions even if commissions do go down. So, you know, the, the, Kevin laid out a potential problem, and I'm laying out to you the potential solution. The potential solution, if commissions do go down, is you have, increase your average sale price, work smarter and not harder. You can actually net more money even if commissions do go down. I will tell you the other benefit of luxury is it's a little bit – I don't want to say it's its own bubble and, and, and luxury is protected – but it is its own animal. I go to these big conferences. I've seen all these people speak. I mean, I had a gentleman say that he thinks 50% of all transactions in five years are going to be iBuyer transactions. If you don't know about iBuyer, it's a totally different animal. But what I can tell you is when I, when I, pu- when I really push these people, Kevin, they don't have the data when it comes to high-end and luxury for iBuyer because it's, it, yeah. it, 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 it's protected. It's a different yeah. little bubble. And I'm not well, saying that's always going to yeah. be that way, but for right now, you know, most of the data, most of these iBuyer programs are for entry-level properties or average price properties, not your high-end and luxury. Well, I think you're, you, you, I'm, I'm glad you said that, Mike. For your audience, it's very true. And I, I want to bring up two more examples of pet peeves in my, in, from my perspective. And it's, sometimes it's easier to see the picture from outside, the picture would frame when you're standing inside of it. And maybe I get the luxury of doing that. Um, to me, the residential real estate market is too focused on houses and not on home buyers and sellers. And I'll give you two examples of that. So Nordstrom is obviously a pretty good consumer brand out there. I got a blazer a couple of years ago and it has lifetime fitting because guys my age typically gain, maybe we lose weight, but we typically gain weight. And I get a call every two years, almost on the same day from them saying, Hey, Kevin, how's your jacket fitting? You know, you have lifetime uh, altering. How's it fitting? This is a disguised sales call, Michael, but he calls me every two years. My car dealership, my wife just went in, we, we, my wife and I just leased a new 2019 Ford. Uh, what a terrible experience, Ford uh, Explorer. Two fronts. One, they cared more about their stock number than our driver's license number. I, I don't think they had a CRM. I think it was a VRM, a vehicle registration management system, because two weeks after we leased the car from this dealership, the sales manager called me asking if he could follow up on the lead that we called in two weeks ago. He didn't even realize we bought a car from him. How's that for a bad system and process? But likewise, uh, uh, we've been in our home now for 19 years here in Seattle. I've got four kids. They're all in college. We are trying to move. I haven't got a single call or email or outreach from any realtor. My my broker agent that we transactioned with you know, 20 years ago, she has long forgotten me. Why? But, you know, Do you um, remember or, her name or, out of curiosity? Uh, don't I, mention I, it. I don't. I don't. Um, oh, I'll yeah. get you a different experience at a different time in terms of, in, in all fairness, we came out for our house hunting trip, and her mother was uh, ill in Dallas, and she didn't even come, and we didn't even meet her. We flew out from Boston. We bought a house. We looked at four houses. We bought one. We negotiated. She never came to our closing. We never even met her. Uh, and we bought the house in 48 hours. 
happily ever after. But my point is, the brokerage doesn't even know our contact information. And how can somebody care more about my suit, which is 600 bucks, or our car, which is 50000 which they didn't care about, or our house, which is, you know, like several million dollars, and no one seems to care about Kevin Foreman or his wife. Now, I don't want 100 callers calling this, but my, my pet peeve for the industry, and I think your bubble and your marketplace for your listeners is really true, care more about the home buyers and sellers than the house. And I think you know, as I look at all the CRMs, most people have data on houses, not people. And, yeah. and Zillow is a good example, right? Zillow knows all about my house, but doesn't know anything about me. Your yeah. listing audience should know all the, everything about me and my wife and my family. And that'd be my sort of pet peeve for the industry. And I think your, your audience is obviously successful because they do that. Well, you bring up a good point. Um, so a couple things. First off, I mentioned the most listened to radio station that the, that the prospects listen to is WIIFM. What's in it for me? Well, the most listened to radio station that agents should listen to is AAT, all about them. Get to know your clients, right. what they like, what they don't like. Stay in communication. Uh, you know, Kevin just shared with us how his agent didn't stay in communication, and that's very very important. Um, it's, it, the other thing that's really important is you need to know what a client is worth to you. Okay, so this gentleman at Nordstrom that co- that sold you the, the the coat stays in contact every two years because, it, like you said, it's a camouflage sales call. But he understands what is a sale worth, not just one time, but a lifetime value of a client is really important. So, uh, you know, we talk about it all the time that, that, that if, if somebody on average buys and sells a home every seven years, okay, every seven years, well, don't just look at it as one transaction, but look at it as if you communicate with them and you get one referral from that client and, and they buy and sell seven homes through, you, through their lifetime through you. I mean, just do the numbers. The numbers can get really sick. But you do it for the right reasons. Treat people the right way, and good things will happen. Don't treat people as if you're a salesman. A consultant right. will tell, talk someone out of the purchase, right? A consultant will say, Kevin, based on what you and your wife had told me, you, th- this home doesn't sound like it's what you're looking for. Now, ultimately, it's Kevin and his wife's decision. But again, by the time somebody is 30, you know, their first average transaction price, I have all the data that we've you know, given a lot of different data as well, Kevin, but if this, the, the first purchase is at age 33 and they buy and sell a home on average, according to NAR, you know, every, you know, every seven years or so, you know, you're looking at literally 10 transactions. Well, you might do the math. That, that, that's 70 years. That's not 10 tra- No, they, they buy the first one with you. They sell the last one with you, but everything in between, they buy and sell. So those are double-up transactions. Right. Okay? Right. So that's 10 transactions from the age of 33 to 78. And again, if they give one referral client during those 45 years, that's 45 referrals from one client over the lifetime of the relationship. So I'm getting off on a tangent, totally different from what we're talking about about but i'm very passionate about don't look at your clients as as a transaction okay look at them as just that a lifelong relationship and be a consultant with them and they'll cheerfully refer refer clients out to you so i got off of a tangent let's circle back to our main topic and so you're a big data company and you really got my attention based on 5.08 percent the average list price listing uh, commission based on real trends and all predictions and all models are that average commissions aren't going to be going up they're going to be going down and you believe that they're going to be going down significantly 1.44 percent over the next seven years based on less less friction, the transaction being smoother, i buyers, all this other right. stuff. So agents and 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 then the punchline is, but don't worry, the jackpot pool, the total available market is going up from seventy five billion to seventy seven billion because those transactions will go. I actually have the math the other way from seven years to probably six point five years, and people will move faster in every industry. When the price of the service goes down, the volume goes up, with the exception of, you know, cancer-fighting drugs, and there's a few others in the pharmaceutical marketplace. But, you know, whether it be the consumption of music or a restaurant food or whatever the case might be, 
Um, you know, if you look at McDonald's, a good Chicago based brand where you are, Michael, right? you know, people didn't used to eat out all the time. And McDonald's said, let's put these burgers by the side of the highway and pre-cook them because people are fast and make them inexpensive. And now look at how much of the, of our overall food wallet people eat in restaurants now versus a hundred years ago, right? It, it's substantial. It's like 19% or somewhere in that range. It used to be like 3%, you know, it used to be a big thing to eat out with your family. Now, most people eat out all the time on a regular basis. Yes. And, and, yeah. and it's part of because the fee has gone down. And that was the headline I wanted to reach because there's so many panels and sessions and your audience will read the same thing of, oh, my gosh, you know, the, 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 the sky is falling because uh, commissions are going down. My, my advice to people is build your model to understand that commissions will go down, but velocity has to increase and velocity will increase and people will spend. I have talked to so many of my colleagues who would sell and buy again, but they don't want to walk away from $45,000 of transaction costs called commissions. And therefore, sure. they're just going to live in their house until they die, and then the kids can then have the money, but they don't want to move to a condo because they're just forty grand is material value to them in many cases of their net worth, and they just don't want to give up forty grand in terms of commission. If they only got to give up twenty five grand, they might do it. And, yeah. you know, it's just a sliding scale. So my, my overall message is don't worry so much, folks, that the commissions will go down because the volume will go up. And, and that's the second line that I just never heard in most of these panels I attend. So it's not that the sky is falling, but you have to reorganize yourself to understand high volume. And as you said now four times, add value, add value, building, you know, fancy offices for your teams with thick carpet isn't adding value, you know, smothering your customers with love and attention and, uh, you know, giving them the update of the process that's value, not investing in commercial real estate where people don't visit it anyway. Love it. Love it. Bring more value. Bring more value. Again, check out our certification. There's 16 modules. The first seven modules, we are all before the signed listing agreement. So ways to work on your mindset to attract more opportunities, to increase conversion, best pre-listing packages, best listing packages. But modules 8 through 16 are all about you got the listing. Now how the heck are you going to get it sold if you got a high-end, a difficult listing, uh, a luxury listing, of course. And we talk Talk about value adds. We talk about the listing, the closing experience in Module 11, Kevin. We talk at the Ritz-Carlton experience. So that was a great segue. Again, the most listened to radio station you as an agent should listen to is AAT, all about them. Be a consultant, an advisor, not a salesperson. Uh, Kevin, if somebody wants more information on Inrix or uh, find out more information about your company and how you guys you know, provide real time and as well as uh, average uh, drive time, I guess, statistics, and yeah. I know you work with a lot of MLSs. How many MLSs um, are you working with? I think 24 are publicly launched in the United States, uh, more under contract, but 24 are officially launched, yes. Okay, and, and where could I find out more information on, 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 on that service and Inrix? Sure. Uh, two things. One, uh, I would actually recommend your audience go to YouTube and uh, just search in Inrix, I-N-R-I-X. It's kind of a tricky spelling, I-N-R-I-X.com. Uh, there's a good, uh, literally 45-second overview on Inrix drive time. Uh, or, of course, just the web, Inrix.com. And uh, right. hit me up on, on, on a personal level on LinkedIn or Facebook. I'm a personal friend of many people on Facebook. LinkedIn is a great way to connect to me personally. Uh, it's just Kevin Foreman, F-O-R-E-M-A-N with an, with an E in the middle uh, of the Foreman. Um, like George, without the boxing career and without the grills, I say. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that, very good, Kevin. I really appreciate your time. And for those listeners, what we'll do is, you know, again, you can always go to luxurylistingpodcast.com. We'll get, grab that 45-second video link, if you don't mind, uh, Kevin, sure. and we'll actually put it in our email blast for everybody as well as on our uh, p podcast website so they can watch that video themselves. How does that sound? Perfect. Great idea. I should have thought of that. You bet. Oh, no, no problem. No problem. Well, good. Again, my name is Michael Lafito. Uh, again, if you guys have any questions about today's episode or anything in general, whether it be a high-end listing, a difficult listing, you're trying to secure a, a trophy listing, those are all services that we provide. We can help you secure those trophy listings. Or if you got that difficult, stale listing, uh, consider our services. We can help you reposition a home, secure, re, you know, secure the listing, get the listing extended, and most importantly, get it sold. 
We do offer other coaching services. And don't forget our new uh, recently launched Luxury Specialist Gear. Check out your special swag there. Go to LuxurySpecialsGear.com. I'm your host, Michael Lafito. You guys have been great. And remember, it's not the market. It's the, it's the marketing. Keep raising the bar for real estate and prove them wrong. Have a great day and go make somebody's day. Take care, guys.